Okay, welcome to the Drive On Moscow review. Today we're going to look at the new game by Shenandoah Studios. And we're going to see what's new and what have they done since Battle of the Bulge. Now if you guys recall, Shenandoah Studios was the development house that created Battle of the Bulge, which released in December of 2012. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Battle of the Bulge, it was an iPad game, and basically this game kind of revolutionized the entire strategy wargaming experience on mobile devices. Um, it made the top 10 in the strategy uh, section of the App Store, and honestly, it got a lot of developers rethinking strategy gaming on a mobile device, whether it be an iPad or an iPhone. It was basically, I, I in my opinion, a revolutionary game because it changed the way people are now looking at gaming on strategy gaming on an iPad. So it's been a year since Battle of the Bulge came out. Let's see what they've done with Drive On Moscow. So starting the game here, uh, there goes my game sensor ID. It kind of gives you a nice cinematic of what's going on in the game here. World War II begins, kind of gives you a heads up just in case you're not familiar with uh, Operation Barbarossa or what happened in World War II. This kind of gives you a uh, a good heads up on what's happening. I usually skip it. <laughs> it also gives you a nice little tutorial, so if you're a brand new player, just dive right in there and you can actually uh, see what's going on and kind of understand. Uh, I'm not a tutorial player, so I never go into tutorials. I I always tell everybody this, if you need a tutorial for a game, if a person needs to run a tutorial to play the game, there's something missing there. You know, I believe a game should automatically, as soon as a player goes into it, they should Within five to ten minutes, that's how long the learning curve should take. It should be very quick. And in this game, it's pretty much down to about ten to fifteen minute learning curve. It's not going to take you that long. It's a little bit. If you're a battle bulge player, it's going to take you a little, just maybe another five ten minutes to kind of get a heads up on what's changed and stuff like that. But it's not too bad. First of all, I'm going to show you here is a game. Um, we're going to start a brand new game with the computer. Kind of give you guys a heads up on. The different type of scenarios that are in here. Obviously, you can choose Soviet or Axis. There's uh, three different scenarios. You have the um, uh, Operation Typhoon at the gates, Zuko's counterattack, and then a really big scenario called the Moscow campaign. I, I like playing this one because uh, I play the other ones, and just when you're about to start getting rolling, and that scenario ends. So uh, I like playing the longer campaign. One cool feature I wish um, Shenandoah Studios added into this, if you do play like uh, Operation Typhoon and you know you're and the scenario just ended and you're about to, you know, you're right at that point where you're about to get started and you're like, oh man, I can't believe it ended. I wish there was a button there that you can continue playing the game uh, beyond the actual set term limits that the uh, the scenario is set at, which would be really cool. I ran into a couple, uh, played a couple of these scenarios where I was just about to destroy the enemy and all of a sudden the scenario ended and I was like, ah, I just needed two more turns. So here we're, I'm going to uh, start at the Moscow campaign here, kind of give you guys a heads up. You can choose your opponent. As you can see here, there's one available that basically tells you that's going to be featured DLC for this game. Alright, so as you can see, if you're an old Battle of the Bulge player, a lot of the things are very familiar here. The UI from Battle of the Bulge. Combat, as you can see, is very simple. Um, right now the Germans get three turns because they're doing a major offensive. Russians can't fight back in this one. After the three, uh, after three turns they can get, uh, then I can start... Um, then my actual forces can actually respond and actually hit them. It's called a prepared offensive, and uh, I'll get one later uh, in the winter, but right now the Germans get it. As you can see, the Russians are getting their uh, boots kicked. Uh, not too bad with this one. That's pretty good. So that's combat. All right, so if you're a Battle of Bulge player, this will look familiar to you. You can look at your victory points here, kind of give you a heads up on what, why, um, 
your units are not going to perform very well in the beginning because uh, there's Soviet command confusion. If you're familiar with history, uh, you'll understand why. Prepared defenses is the thing I was just telling you about. You can look at supply, see how your units are functioning correctly. Weather is a big key factor in this game. This is one of the major features that uh, has been put into um, Drive On Moscow. Now, uh, th there was a little bit of weather effects in Battle of the Bulge, very, very little. Um, just so enough so that you know your planes couldn't fly and you just had combat bonuses. But here, it actually is a full-on weather component. Uh, in this game, uh, I, obviously right now, the uh, we have clear skies. But the weather will affect combat, it will affect movement. Snow and frost will obviously help the Russians. So when snow and frost, uh, the Germans are kind of at a disadvantage. That's why if you're a German player, you kind of want to rush through this game so this way you don't get anywhere near winter. Uh, but unfortunately right now we have clear skies and it's beautiful weather, which basically means the Germans. Yeah, the Germans are in the... Um, have surprise and we're kind of uh, the Russians are in uh, not in a good shape right now so they're gonna get their boots handed to them. Uh, air interdiction gives you a heads up what's going on uh, with the air power. So I'm gonna do basically one turn to kind of give you guys a heads up on how combat is being done here. If, um, it's very similar to the previous battle, uh, battle of the Bulge. I'm gonna do something like this. I know this is a suicide run but just going to give you a heads up, especially if you're a new player. So as you can see, you have this UI telling you how many hits you're going to take. I'm going to take about three, and Germans probably take one, so this is not a good idea. Um, Germans also have this uh, tree in that little checkerboard thing, give, letting me know that they're actually um, fortified. So, oh, and this is something I wanted to kind of inform you guys. So when starting to play this game and this type of UI here, um, I was trying to find where the where I click turn. And I'm going around and going around I'm like where do I click it? Normally it was a little button that said commit or said turn. But I had to go around and eventually just find it and there it goes. There's commit. Now what I would have loved the developers to do is kind of take that star out, maybe put commit there. Uh, primarily because it's just it serves no function. It's just a star. And especially if you're a new player, you're going to have a hard time looking for it and be clicking all these buttons. Click commit. Ooh. Ooh, not bad. Oh, bad. Oh, really bad. Yeah, so I didn't do too well there. I took three hits. And now it's the German star. And this is how it works. You take a turn, Germans take a turn. Yeah, he's not going to do well. So if you're looking at this little UI here, a little box here, you're going to notice the way time works is very different from Battle of the Bulge. It's not a day-by-day -day basis. It actually combines into uh, this one's actually three days. Um, so once you get fill up this entire time and it, hits, uh, it goes over 72 hours, um, you can resupply your units with uh, additional reinforcements. And um, there's two units that I use on the bottom already. I can't use them until um, the time goes beyond 72 and a new, uh, basically a new time cycle uh, starts. So any units I use right now, I could use once. And once that time cycle ends out at 72 and a new one begins, then I can use those same units because as you can see here, I can't use them. Can't use that one. So as you can see here, the map is um, pretty huge on this game. It's very big, uh, much larger than Battle of the Bulge. If you zoom in, you can see that amazing detail that they put in. You can actually see the, the bloody bridges on this game, which is really amazing. I, I'm, I'm surprised at the level of detail they put into this game. See the town, you have Kursk there, Moscow here. So a lot of detail, you can see the rivers. Really looks absolutely beautiful. Um, the animation is very smooth. I really, I, I mean, it's amazing. Um, so th that that's really something I did pick up on. Um, another thing that I would have loved for them to do is in the um, original Battle of the Bulge from one from last year. On the top left, 
you used, to, you used to tell you, instead of clicking this and seeing the time there, it used to tell you right in that top left. So you just way you don't had it. You didn't have to constantly do this. Okay. And go back. So that's something I wish they would have included. Uh, it would also told you your victory points in the top left, but they took that out. I don't know why. It would also be cool if they put the weather in this little, small little area on the top left. Um, because you constantly doing this, it gets a little, you know. Um, ju jumping into this menu here, um, as I told you before, turns are kind of time phases are broken up into about three, sometimes a five-day cycle. So you have the calendar in the top left of this little uh, UI here, kind of giving you a heads up on how it's broken down. Right now we're on the, the time cycle, time phase of 30, first and the second of October here. You have the victory points in the middle, the weather here, obviously clear skies, so I'm going to get my butt kicked. Briefing, as you can, I showed you that before here. You have a quick uh, supply issue, kind of give you heads up on who's in the best supply. All pretty familiar if you play the previous game, calendar of course. I do enjoy this because it kind of gives me a heads up on um, what kind of units I have, what kind of units will... Uh, um, will I get reinforced with and such. Now one cool thing this game has done is you can get replacements. So if I, for example, lose these two units that I basically sent to their doom, <laughs> the 29th Army, if they're destroyed, which they will be, <laughs> I can actually refit them and actually put them out. Um, they'll be on the top of the actual, um, I can re-put them in, in certain places like uh, uh, Moscow is one place that I can reform the unit. Um, but that's a really cool option that they did. You can actually replace broken units. Of course you can get replacements as well um, if you're familiar with the old game. Um, you do have reinforcements here in this game. Um, let me see what else. Uh, you have undo which is this new option here. So if I click this guy here you can click that and boom it undoes it. A couple cool new units here is the airborne unit. Now the airborne unit can jump around the map. You can only obviously do it once. I'm not going to waste that. Uh, you have tanks. One big another feature that they did in this game, which is really, really useful if you're the Soviets, which is railroads. That's right. They put in railroads in this game. So a normal infantry unit can probably move about one, one basically one tile, one province. But because you have railroads, you can jump a crap load of them. <laughs> you can literally jump uh, pretty far in this game. So that's another really cool feature. Let's see what else. I'm trying to go down my list here to cover every base. Make sure I give you guys all the um, all the information here. Um, one thing I noticed about re uh, reinforcing units, I can't show you here. But I'm, um, but it's a three-day turn, so it'll take a while for me to show you. But when you're reinforcing units, um, you can't reinforce them all. Um, you can only f reinforce certain ones that they give you, which is kind of weird. I, if you're, if they give you an extra infantry unit to reinforce, I would figure you kind of reinforce all your units, but only only select ones you can put it into, which is kind of odd. Um, let's see what else. One other thing that I noticed about the AI, sometimes it's smart, sometimes it's very rash. It might depend on the commander that I chose, but there would be times where, for example, if I had, let's say, if I had, let's say, three guys in Moscow, the Germans sometimes would only send one unit and literally get slaughtered, which is kind of odd. I always kind of question those decisions, why I would normally send one division against a massive Russian army and it would literally get slaughtered. I noticed that a few times. Uh, what we're going to do now is just do a few other turns, kind of give you guys a heads up a little bit more about the combat. Get slaughtered a little bit more. <laughs> Infantry against armor. This is going to be interesting. Ooh, not too bad. Ooh, well, getting worse, getting worse. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, not too good. Not good at all. 
I did one hit of damage, though. <laughs> At least I did one <laughs> something. Not too bad here, not too bad. Let's see if I can rush through this. So this way I can give you a heads up on how, how the time phase is gonna work out. So I'm gonna have Hugo here. I'm doing a huge rush and counter attack and get slaughtered. Which technically happened in the Southern Theater. I heard uh, Russians just basically threw man and machine at the Germans and got chewed up. Pass my turn. We're getting close there. And you can also, um, oh. Oh, there goes my unit. All right, let's see if I can crush this. As you can see here, you have turn over. And now I'll have full access to, uh, actually, it's the Germans' turn first, so they're going to actually. You could always hit this key also, and it'll kind of give you a heads up on. Um, what each defensive uh, icon means. Wow, not doing well. Oof. Oh wow, they get another turn. Hmm. Wow. All right. So as you can see here, uh, this is basically turn two, and it gives you a heads up what's going on. Um, and here we go. We have the reinforcements. Now, these are replacement units that, that I'm going to be using. One thing I didn't like about um, this is, so for example, I want to put, if I want to put all three in Moscow, I can't. I have to choose one, which is kind of odd. Okay. And so those are my reinforcements. You have to spread them out, which is kind of odd. I don't know why. Um... As you can see, now I have full control of this unit. I can basically send them uh, to get attacked, but I think I'm gonna withdraw them. But just give you a heads up on this key here, kind of gives you a heads up, a uh, little info burst here of, just in case you're a new player. Ooh, I'm down to 10%. Yeah, I'm gonna retreat. Okay. Um, and that's basically single player. I'll be honest, this is a very addicting game. <laughs> um, I've been finding myself playing this game far more than uh, Battle of the Bulge, um, primarily because of the scope of this game. I, I, I feel the weather, especially when when you're going to see che seasons changing this game, it, it brings a whole new life into this game where, um, for example, if you are at Kaluga and there's a river between you and the Germans and the Germans on the southern end and you're on the northern end, well, when the river freezes over, guess what? There is no penalty from crossing over, which is really cool. I, I like that attention to detail. I give big props to Shenandoah Studios for doing that. Um, if you go into help here, it'll kind of give you a heads up how this weather... Uh, let's see. Special. There we go. So kind of give you a heads up on how weather is treated, which is really cool. I really like that attention to detail. Next thing we want to do, dive into is uh, we're going to go into the main menu. I'll show you how multiplayer is handled. Uh, I already have a game playing. Dive into it. I'm not. I don't think I'm doing too well in this game actually. Ah, bloody heck! Dang it! All right, let's see. Ah, 
All right, so that was not good. Actually, uh, they kicked me out of Tulsa, and my I actually surrounded these three Panzer divisions, these two Panzer divisions, the motorized division here, and I was hoping to cut them out from supply and destroy them, but apparently uh, this guy here is a little saw my plan. But as you can see, this is uh, the weather is negative forty, which basically means that it's uh, I believe frost. I think that's what means frost. I think that's what it means for us. Yeah. So let me just double check that. Yeah, it's frost. So basically, the lakes and rivers are frozen, which is um, good for both sides, I guess. So one cool thing about the multiplayer here is you can dive here, and they actually included a chat function, which was not as well. Um, functional and that is the way I wanted it in Battle of the Bulge. In Battle of the Bulge you can only send one message per turn so when you did your turn you can send one message to him when he finishes his turn he can send you a message to you. It was kind of wasn't right. They fixed it now you have a nice little little area here where you can actually type in whatever you want and say hey buddy and you can send messages as many as you want um, and not have to deal with the turn-based uh, message system anymore, which is beautiful. Another cool thing is they uh, included uh, some cool features from iOS 7, which allowed, um, so for example, if you're playing an opponent and he hasn't moved for quite a while, you can actually set it as so that it bypasses his turn and you go. So that's a really cool feature because uh, in a lot of games I was playing, um, in a lot of games I was playing, I had one opponent that never moved for maybe sometimes days or weeks. And eventually, you kind of just say, you know what, forget it, I'm not playing anymore. And you start a new game and you keep running into the same type of people who always forget to do their turn. But this kind of eliminates that, which is really cool. Um, combat here is the same thing here. Um, I want to actually do a smart move. I'm, I'm not going to just try to kill my unit here because I actually care about this one game here. Um, let's see if I can move this guy. Uh, you know, I think I think in this game I'm on the defensive, so I'm not gonna actually probably do anything. I'm gonna probably do a time pass. Um, let's see if I can hit this guy. Nah, you know what? Because he's gonna flank me there. Yeah, it's just time to pull back. And then I just have to wait for him to finish his move. Um, so before I, I, I leave the multiplayer screen, so basically the multiplayer works exactly as single player, but has those nice cool options uh, with the chat functionality, which is really cool. Now, three things that I, I, I mentioned that I want to mention that I want to see improved. Um, let's see, uh, I wrote here... Ah, okay, cool. When two uh, units go into combat, and I want to show you guys here, I just want to how to read my notes here. <laughs> One cool thing that I, I would like to see added is when you tap, let's say um, I'm attacking this guy, and let's say halfway through combat I want to retreat instead of ha him destroying my unit, I wish there was a retreat button. So instead of him taking, instead of me taking three hits, I could have clicked retreat after one hit. That would have been a really cool option to have, and I wish it would, uh, Hopefully, in the future, include that. Um, but overall, I, I can't see any major things that I, I would like to change in here. Um, basically, what they did is they took Battle of the Bulge and they improved it. Um, and that's exactly what we wanted. Um, so, big props to Shenandoah Studios for doing that. Um, they, didn't, they didn't fix... I'm sorry. <laughs> they didn't... Uh, they didn't fix what, what wasn't broken, so that was a really good, um, well, I'm really doing bad in this one here. Uh, so that was a really good feature that they did, um, and I really give uh, a thanks to them for uh, keeping what worked and throwing out what didn't work. Um, let's see, and that's about it. Let's go into the main menu. I just want to show you a few other things, and then we can, uh, and that'll be the end of this review here, and you can go check in my written review if you want more information. There's a lot of extras in this game. So you can literally 
I'm going to show gameplay statistics here. History is a big thing. I, I've been actually reading this. This is really good. Um, they did a lot of history in this game here. You can read all about Operation Barbarossa. What failed, what, why it caused, um, why it ultimately failed, uh, because the Germans were in a lot better shape than the Russians uh, in terms of uh, troop experience. and uh, There was a lot of reasons reading this that I read why it didn't work out too well uh, for the Germans. Uh, one interesting feature, which, um, which uh, kind of led to the German defeat, was... Um, Operation Barbarossa was supposed to start on, let's see if I can find it here, I'm probably not going to find it because I was reading it a while ago, but um, it was supposed to start on May 15th, but because of fighting in Yugoslavia and Greece, uh, it started toward uh, the end of June. So that was a, that was interesting. Those couple of weeks would have given, given the Germans the ability to reach and take Moscow, which would have changed the course of the war, possibly. Um, and that's basically it. That's my video review. Um, if you guys want more information, dive into my written review. And um, that's basically it, guys. Um, I will catch you in the next review. See you then.